Welcome everybody to On Their Way Up, a show about young, aspiring entertainers and athletes. My name is Spencer Gordman, and today I am joined by a young filmmaker from Omaha, Nebraska. He has made a number of short films, most recently sequel, uh, and is working on his first feature film. Uh, he's also the what founder of and runner of Paradise Films, as I was called. Uh, I would call yeah, co-founder of Paradise Film Co. Yeah. Easy enough. All right, co-founder. Uh, thank you for being on the podcast, Gavin Lake. What's going on, man? Not much. What's going on with you, man? Thank you for having me on. Yeah, thank you for being on. So this podcast really focuses on, um, even for people who aren't currently like young, just people who are trying to, you know, follow whatever dream they have. Uh, and it's all about kind of, especially the early few years of it, um, and kind of up to where they are now. So like, take me back to like, when, when did you first, not even before, not even when you decided you wanted to make movies, but like, when did you first start to fall in love with movies? It actually kind of started at the same time. Like I've, I've always like kind of liked movies. I feel like everyone on a certain level likes movies, but um, it was actually like, this is crazy, but like my mom saw Django Unchained. <laughs> and it was like, you would love this. And I was like, like, just like she kind of explained it to me and I was like, oh, I don't really know. Buddy. But she like, she kind of made me sit down and watch it. And I was like, all right, this is amazing. And I kind of like got the ball rolling. And then at the same time, um, we she found like the Omaha Film Festival. And there was the thing called the Omaha uh, Film Academy, which is actually at the Funny Bone, or it, it took place at the Funny Bone. Um, and I got to like leave school for a couple days and learn all about filmmaking. And I, I met a couple people who are now lifelong friends. I met Caleb, uh, my nice. freshman year, like at this thing. And, um, I saw that I saw like Django Unchained. And then actually I saw the hateful eight, uh, <laughs> well, so you were, you were Tarantino from the So when we make fun of you for being like a Tarantino spinoff person, like that's what you started watching. Well, yeah. Like I'm such a Tarantino spinoff person because like my, my first like three, like formative movies, as far as like getting like as I was getting into filmmaking were in order Django Unchained the hateful eight and then Pulp Fiction like, <laughs> wow like I just started chasing him and then and then yeah that's and he, that just kind of happened to be the same time I fell in love with movies and yeah so for a while I could not I couldn't escape the Quentin Tarantino stuff even if I even if I wanted to well but, it's it's something where like obviously Tarantino is so like his style is very distinctive. Like you watch one mm -hmm. of his movies and it's like, oh yeah, that's a Tarantino film. And but so a lot of people often will like emulate certain aspects, but literally like the first thing that you got into when you started making movies was him. So it, it makes so much sense. Yeah, and it's it's not as like special as I thought it was at the time because like every fifteen year old like who gets into filmmaking gets into Quentin Tarantino. And right. so like I think it's it's good i think he's a very good um starter director uh, for sure to like because he is so distinctive and you can just see that it's a quentin tarantino movie and i think it's a good way to like it's a very good basis on what directing is when yeah. when you can when you can see it so clearly and then you can kind of look for other directors so uh, like i think on a certain level i've grown out of him a little bit like i think there's still I mean, certainly there's been aspects of him. Um, even I, I think even in I Refuse to Die in Omaha, Nebraska, I think there's things that he has done that, that you can see if you if you know what to look for. But yeah. Right, and, and I Refuse to Die in Omaha, Nebraska is your, your current yes. feature film. Hilarious title. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Is that the working title or is that you intend to keep that all the way through? I think that's going to be the, the bold, the official title. I actually, I the other day I had a, a different title that I thought would be kind of nice, but uh, everyone, everyone like liked "I Refuse to Die in Omaha, Nebraska." When I kind of showed them that list of different titles, so right. I was like, "All right, that's that's what we can go with." So, also, I think if you're just looking at stuff on a list, it's like there's a lot of like, not to say derivative, but just like, okay, I've seen like this type of attitude, but like, "I Refuse to Die in Omaha, Nebraska" is so like specific. Yeah. 
yeah. like there's so much attitude behind that phrase like i think it's awesome yeah and it was actually something where i came up with it and then i told um caleb bobby and trent who are the the other four members of the paradise film co um and then i kind of like moved away from it because i thought it was too long and but they really liked it still so then what i did was i hid that that title in that list with <laughs> with a bunch of other titles that i just kind of because i was gonna be like see no one else likes this title and i swear within 30 seconds of like dropping that list in a group chat that is not that active um everyone was like oh my god i love this stuff. like i love i refuse to die. <laughs> so i was like ah, you're like god it. damn it all right i guess they were right yeah and i think it's it's a very specific title and i think it's something where hopefully if people ever see it in the theater they'll be like oh what, what like what's that about like <laughs> yeah and it's just like omaha definitely has that connotation of like inescapability or it's like people who are from here and who live here will just die here like they might go somewhere and they'll come be back yeah yeah i i like what uh what jacob he, he was a pa on the movie he's he said it's like sounds like a spaghetti western title <laughs> uh, like, oh yeah like, yeah i was like oh okay yeah that's funny were you ever a, a western fan like did that ever influence you or were you just like eh <sighs> um yes and no uh trent has definitely been more of a western person than than i have but like i've seen the good the bad and the ugly i've seen once upon a time in the west i've seen a lot of like the classics it's never been mm -hmm. something where i I'm, I'm not like dying to make a western i think i have a kind of a movie for just about every genre and right. western just isn't actually one of them but i i love the spaghetti westerns i, I want to make like I want to use the Leone style and other things. I, I thought about making like a spaghetti horror movie, basically. <laughs> well, and it's like, even just as somebody who watches so many movies and appreciates movies so much, like you kind of just have to, well, it's like, all right, even though I'm not a huge fan, there's just a lot of respect there for like what it is. It being a filmmaker, com like this isn't really surprising to anyone. It completely changes how you watch movies like I'm, I'm sure it's the same way with comedy where i like stand-up comedy and i'm a i would even call myself a like a pretty good fan of stand-up comedy I've, I've seen a lot of specials but it's like i know it just has to be completely different when you do what they're doing on a, on a certain yeah level. and it's to a certain degree because i'm you know i haven't like made a, a special or an album or done anything like that so i'm sure even when i go and do that that I'll add like a whole nother layer of understanding of what goes behind making mm. something like that. But definitely like when I hear a joke, I can break it down to a level that like people wouldn't. Yeah. And, and they're like, Hey man, you know how you're not supposed to explain why something's funny. Cause that ruins it. And I'm yeah. like, yeah, but I'm one of the people that it doesn't ruin it for. Like yeah. you got to yeah. appreciate it. I don't know, but I get it. Yeah. You can, you like, you can take, apart a joke in a way that like not many people can and it's the same thing with with filmmakers where it's like i can watch a scene and like i know exactly how it'll work or how they like thought this was like what this means to the story what how they lit this everything like that and it completely changes how you watch movies the other day uh, i watched the latest scream and okay i figured out who the killer was uh like 30 seconds into when they were on screen <laughs> so it, it was funny. a it was a long movie to watch when you know exactly like exactly what right. the last part of the movie is i was like uh, but it, it was a good movie but i i could just no, i get it and even what's interesting is even on like an amateur level like we can still just because being obsessed with something and then doing it for a, you know for me it's a few years for you it's been few more than a few years but seven, seven roughly yeah yeah like we just it's like putting in like your ten thousand hours you just get a better understanding of something uh, for music it's the same thing my girlfriend is is huge into music and can play so many different things so she can break down a song really interestingly uh definitely to a level where like i as a pretty big music fan and like you know i pick up the guitar here and there like just when you're dedicated to something and so obsessed with something you really just understand it more than like a casual or even like fairly hardcore fan would yeah do, do you remember the first time that you like heard a joke or you heard like 
a set where you were like, oh, like I'm never going to be able to like hear this the same way. Because I, I have that, and I just wanted to know if, if there was, if you remember that specifically. Meaning what? Do your example, and then I think I'll figure out what you're talking about. So I was watching The Nice Guys when it came out in theaters. Excellent movie. Um, and I remember I noticed when the first act break was, or like when the, like the the very famous, uh, at least amongst my my friends, my my party trick is I can tell when a movie's about twenty minutes in. Um, because that's like the turning that's usually the turning point for most movies where like the characters make a decision that leads them into the second act like it's they they can't go back from it and I noticed that I started like real like I, I noted I was noticing screenplay elements as the movie was happening and I was like oh I was like oh shit this is I'm always gonna watch movies like this from now on like it's it's, i'll never be able to just watch a movie again i think comedy is so bare bones compared to a movie okay and like i feel like a lot of people know you know set up punchline and then the part that some people don't know is a tag at the end of the punchline i think comedy is just like the the parts are all in front of you and it's just how you put them in different orders and bring in different concepts uh i think for me one that sticks out was I don't even remember the name of the special. It was a Russell Peters special. Okay. Um, I forget. It's like a, he has like a face tattoo as the cover art, blue background. It's a fantastic special. Okay. What he did that I loved was he would do crowd work and then use the crowd work to launch into stories to mm. a point where you didn't even know, like, were these stories prearranged or did he do it based off the crowd work? And okay. So I thought it was really interesting. That's something that I've tried to adopt a little bit more is like using crowd work in a way where I know the response I'm going to get, or I like know the direction that it's going to go to jump into a bit or into a line, like with the gun control bit, when you saw me at the funny bone the other night, I was going to bring that up. Yeah. Yeah. Like I was like, Oh, I can use this uh, crowd work to like channel it. So I, uh, it's just, you pick up little bits here and there from different comedians. uh, But I think because it's so bare bones and like most people know the structure without having done stand up, like you kind of, it's a lot more obvious. I was going to say, I think your gun control bit, um, I know you're not going to like me using this word, but I think it's genius in a way because uh, you're using like Jim Jeffries, but it's fun. the, The way that I thought about it at least was like, you use like the silence of like refusing to answer like the silence is the punchline and i haven't ever really at least i haven't noticed many jokes like that where someone's refusal to answer a question like the lack of the punch is the punchline and i was like that's insane that i at least for me like like obviously i don't know anything but no that's that's a great bit and I think oh, that's, that's that's my favorite bit of yours for sure. It's also my newest bit, which is fun. Like yeah. that's that's my most recently written one. So it's like, I don't know. I feel like every like two or three, I'll have like that's my new favorite bit. Where like I'll write a couple, and it's like that's pretty fun, and I'll see if I can work with it. But then like recently of the past, like I don't know. There've been like four or five bits relatively recently where it's just like, oh, that's my new favorite. Oh, that's my new favorite. I think it's good to like, you're always looking, you're always going like, okay, I'm, I'm seeing myself improve because these are getting increasingly like complex or more fun to do. I'm sure it's the same with your movies. Yeah. Well, actually that's, that's how we started doing the, that's why, why I knew I could start working on a feature was because me and Trent, because I guess for people who don't know the way that uh, like paradise kind of breaks down is like me and Trent, are almost always like directing and writing. Like, like we do a lot of directing, a lot of writing. Caleb does a little writing. Caleb's directed before. Um, obviously, we're all kind of involved in the story, but Caleb usually does sound and he's an editing guy. And he, he's a lot of like the technical side, as mm-hmm. is Bobby. So, you know, when me and Trent were talking back and forth about like what our next movie would be, everything we talked about was like too complex to do. In a, a short 
And right. Sunday, mo- Sunday morning was kind of the, the linchpin of that. Cause I, I kind of looked around and I was like, this is kind of like the logical conclusion for our shorts. And it's 23 minutes long, which isn't, it's a it's obviously it's not a feature but it's that's a long short film and you get to a certain point where it's like if you make a 30 to 40 minute short there's not really a ton of like reason to do that and even really if you make anything past 15 because part of the reason why like i didn't put sequel anywhere even though i thought it was easily our best work at the time was because it's 17 minutes long so even if it's really good you're gonna like shorts when you go into festivals they they go into blocks so and usually the blocks are hour hour and a half so it's like if you take up 20 minutes of a of a short block you're taking up basically two you're taking up two spots so you have to justify that you're gonna be good enough for two spots and i wasn't quite sure if sequel was at that level especially if we took the beatles music out which we would have had to so Right. And it's like part of it is also just making it for you. Like there's got to be, you know, because when you first start making this stuff or doing stand up or making music or whatever it is, like I feel like the motivations change. Like I know for me, like when I start doing it and I give this, I was actually thinking about this the other day. Like anytime somebody's new into stand up, like there's a guy at an open mic the other night and we're all talking about this comedy competition at the Omaha Funny Bone that they do about once every month, once every six weeks. Mm-hmm. He'd never done stand up before, so he was like asking questions about it, and I was like, "Dude, like just do stand up because you love doing stand up." And people will ask, "Like, how do you make money in this? How do I get on gigs?" And it's like, just do it because you love it, and you'll get better at it because you do it a lot because you love it a lot, and and then it'll come. Yeah, well, um, things have definitely changed just after making the the feature. Like, they're definitely like we're never going to be able to go back now to you know just making shorts where we know there's not going to be any money involved. And it like, like once you get a taste of that, even as stressful and as, uh, as just intensive as that process was, it's going to be really hard for us to go back to, you know, we go out, we shoot for a weekend and then we're done. Like, like we can't do that anymore. Um, so yeah, now we've, un- unfortunately, and, and also fortunately we've had to think about, you know, what are we going to make next as far as, features like we'll make shorts here and there i think for a little bit but the the days of us just you know making films just because we love making films are almost over and then we're now we're now having to think about it like a business unfortunately but right that would be something actually i think that's great advice actually for people who are starting out in comedy or filmmaking or everything is really enjoy the days that you're just doing this for fun yeah, and I think it's also don't get too caught up in all the other stuff because at the end of the day, if you stop having fun, that'll be reflected. Mm-hmm. And like, if you're caring too much about this or that, like, it's important to care and to put a lot of effort through. But like, there's a period on stage past, I don't know, I'd call it from like January till like maybe April where I just like wasn't having that much fun on stage. Like I was too worried about other stuff. I was trying to control my persona to be like, people want to, you know, see this type of just stand there and tell it. People want high energy people, you know, and mm-hmm. then I just started having fun again. And then I, I noticed the change immediately and it benefited. Cause then when I was able to, you know, have a guest spot at the comedy club of Kansas city or do the comedy competition in Omaha or do a, like a 23 minute set on like a Saturday night show, like, I did way better than I would have because I was having fun. Uh, yeah. And that's, I think that's uh, a great way to look at it. I think, yeah, every, every movie where I was not having fun is significantly worse than like the movies, at, at least in my mind, my internal list of my movies. Um, those movies are so much worse than the movies where I'm like having a great time. It's like, I think sequel is awesome because, or at least in, in, as for my standards because we were like just kind of creating this thing that like we hadn't we hadn't really seen before i hadn't really seen before so we were you know putting a track down right in front of us in a way that i'd never really seen before and it was it was awesome like we we, i think we could all tell we were creating something really cool even if none of us understood if it was gonna work in the end 
No, we had so sequel essentially uh I played Gavin. So my role was a director of a short film. And then I the short film I was making was a short yeah, film sequel. about making a short film. Yeah. It was it was something, man. It was <laughs> So you... yeah. I I remember that because I love working with uh because actually one of the another actor i had was a stand-up comedian as well who was not actually in in this movie or in i refuse to die in omaha nebraska but he was in some other things we did um and i loved working with you guys so like when i met you i was like oh like i just kind of put you in the back of my mind as like someone to maybe work with and then like you and me just started talking we just got a little bit closer over the summer and then i think i showed you sunday morning and then you showed me a set you did in Des Moines? Yeah, at Teehees in Des Moines. That was from, God, I want to say that was like January of 2021. Yeah, that that was a, it was a fun set, but it was like, man, have I come a long way since then, but it was a good set. Oh, okay, okay. So actually, what you told me at the time was you did not think it was very good. So I was like, oh, okay. Like, because I had never seen you perform before. So then I watched it. <laughs> And I was like, if this is like, if he doesn't think this is very good, then that means that he's like really good. And, and what's so funny is the more time that's passed, the more I'm like, for where I was, that was pretty good. But yeah. then like almost being too close to it, I was like, oh, I'm ashamed. Yeah. 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 So I was like, I was like, okay, this is like, he's the guy. And we, we, I think we were just similar enough, at least in, you know, ideas and I think work ethic where I, I could tell that like if i offered you this part you were gonna gonna really take it seriously um that's why i was like all right let's let's do it and i also like i knew that you weren't gonna be afraid to kind of play the character as as flawed as he is because while i was writing i, I kind of looked up like how to write about yourself and one of the things was like make sure that the character is very clearly flawed so like the audience yeah. trust you and I knew that you were going to be able to make fun of me in a, 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 in a, in a sense to, to really sell that. And I think you do a, you, I, I think you do such a better job than you think you do in that movie. Oh, for sure. Okay. I was going to say, cause you were like, Oh, well, I wasn't that good. And I was like, no, you were like, I was, I was fine. I mean, it's, I'd never had acted before. Like my background was very much not in acting it was always like reading my own words. Mm -hmm. And even then it's like, I feel like live performance is just so much different than mm -hmm. being on screen. Cause live you get the reaction immediately, but being on screen, it's like, well, let's see if that, you just kind of got to look around. Like, was that good? Did everybody have that? Was that good? And you just kind of got to trust everybody on set. I think it's, it was so crazy though for your first like, cause I know you said you did, you'd done like one other short film before. So, mm -hmm. but I was like, okay, like that's fine. And like, I could definitely tell that like on your first day that like you were much further along than some other people I've worked with that were in their first shorts. Like you were, you got it a little bit more. And I, I wonder if like the concept being so confusing kind of helped in a way, because I think everyone on set just kind of had to trust that like I got it that, that that like I was like I had everything um under control because I think if for like a more surface level concept where everyone can kind of see how it works like you know I refuse to die in Omaha Nebraska if I say something that doesn't quite make as much sense it's more obvious on right there's a sequel where like I think I just had to be like Spencer you're doing great and this is exactly what I want. And I think you like, we ever did be like, okay, like this, this. Oh yeah. All, all of us just kind of looked around and like, we went, you know what? You're the guy with the, the last say on what is getting in and what's not. So if you're happy, we're happy. But it, <laughs> I, I think towards the end of it, we kind of got it. But I think that first day, which was a little shorter, I think it was good for me just cause like, I kind of got the whole, like, we're going to do multiple takes. We're going to do multiple angles. Okay. You got to, Camera's on you, so you got to be on. Camera's on your co-star, so you don't have to do it as genuinely, but still try mm -hmm. to hit the same. Like, just that 
day one of acting stuff because it really was like my day one like that yeah i think was really beneficial yeah and i i think you you got better every day which is kind of what i was gambling on because i i knew that the last day of shooting which was down in my room was going to be the day where it was going to be the hardest i thought because you don't talk in those scenes you just have to physically act and um I knew what I wanted for like the last scene. And that was something where I didn't even like begin to try to explain it to Bobby when I first had the idea for the scene, because it's so like abstract and it, it's just the biggest swing I've ever taken at, at least up, up to that point that I was like, I'm just going to handle this zoom into Spencer's eyes. And, <laughs> and then, yeah. We, yeah, we did that last, that last take. And I think, I think you killed it. And I, was really excited to ask you back for for because just because also I think Palmer is a much easier character probably to play. So I knew I made the right choice when I picked you because when we were doing the table read, uh, we were you like we you were making people laugh so hard that we got off like track on like, oh yeah that was fun on the table read yeah well because. I mean, my whole thing is like, whenever I'm in a situation like that, I'm just going to try to make as many people laugh for the most selfish reasons possible. I mean, it literally is like a defense mechanism, Mm -hmm. especially being around like when I'm around a bunch of comedians, like, and I had that, I experienced this recently where I was on a couple shows where I like didn't know some of the people on it. And like one of the comedians, like we literally talked like throughout the entire show, did our sets and then talked like a half hour afterwards, just because we had like so much, you know. I think Jerry Seinfeld said this when two comedians meet, they already have like 10,000 things in common. Yeah. Yeah. And so, but being around people who like everybody was an actor and the vibes a little bit different, the energy is a little bit different, like a little more professional, a little less fuck aroundy. Like I just wanted to go in and just set the tone. Like, Hey, I'm the goofball. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. It was, but I I had fun with it. You, You did. And I, I mean, I think everyone, like right because i mean bobby he didn't know you as well and not that i mean bobby was like he can't do this at all but i think bobby was more like his only experience with you was on the sequel which is a much more serious movie and you're playing a much more serious role and he's like he's like really spencer for for this i'm like oh yeah and and then like <laughs> right as right as we finished and right as you left you're, he was like yeah spencer's uh like that was a, that was a really good call and that that's like I, you don't give yourself nearly enough credit for being the as good an actor as you are. Oh, without a doubt. But I also like I don't focus on it that much. So I kind of just go like, yeah, I did, I did this, and you mm-hmm. look at it and see how you are. But definitely with stand up, I'm a little more like, I don't know. I focus more on it, so I kind of have a better idea of where I'm at. Mm-hmm. I think. But I mean, acting it's it's fun, and I think it it works my my brain in a different way because i'm a very linguistically focused guy like i love using mm-hmm. words and uh, cadence and stuff and so acting it's like kind of different form of that yeah and I, I think it was nice because yeah we there was a couple times on set where i was like what if you try it like this and you, you were just able to like figure out like a completely different way of saying like the exact same line like almost right. instantly and I, I could tell that yeah you're definitely a you're a wordsmith for sure um I, I try my best. I, I've read Cat in the Hat one or two times. I know a thing. You have directed for the past seven or so years, right? Mm-hmm. Have you ever had any acting experience? And, well, I guess I'll start with that. Have you ever acted in anything before? And, like, how long ago was that? Uh, the answer, it, yes, I have. Um, and it's uh, it's in a movie that I hope no one ever watches um and that was i thought sequel is pretty good (laughs) yeah no 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 no. yeah um the first the first movie i ever made um i was making it by myself and uh for anyone who doesn't make movies or who has seen the filmmaking process but hasn't made one themselves uh that's kind of impossible as i'm sure you could as i'm sure you could imagine after watching like what we do like oh, no, yeah. like one of us running around and doing all that. Uh, and I also acted in the movie and I hate my performance so much that I 
really don't have any plans to ever be in anything else I make, like in a speaking role, because I just... I, I can't get my brain to switch to like an actors. Like I love actors and I love working with actors, but I don't understand how you can like, like, especially on, on this where it's like, we've seen like really high level acting. Like, I mean, Brett, for example, um, did a fantastic job. I don't understand how we can get to the place where he's essentially a, a different person. I feel like if yeah. I was, you know, I feel like if I was acting, I would still like my I would still be very like much inside my head as far as like this is fake like like all, all oh, of yeah. this is like not real and I don't know how like people can make that look believable or switch or turn their brain into a different kind of like flip the right switch where they can I don't understand on a it's certain so level. wacky to me because like even like I mean we you're you've directed pretty much everything i've acted in like when i've seen like when we when you say cut on like that take like i'm immediately fucking around again yeah like i it is like there's not a lot of time between when you say we're done and i'm like back to being a like goofy little dickhead so what the fuck are you doing though when the scenes hat like are you still like like what are you th- are you thinking like as palmer or like, like are you thinking oh, i have no idea <laughs> oh i'm just i'm just trying to go like all right these are the words like i get into it to a certain degree but it's definitely not to where like 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 brett like you said like i didn't work with him i worked i've worked with nate nate's another person that we're both friends with he was in sequel the one i did and now and i refuse to die in omaha nebraska nate's awesome he has that switch where like literally there was a uh, a scene where he needs to be like pissed off at me and trying to like beat my ass and I was trying to joke around with him. He's like, don't. Yeah. I need to stay in this because mm-hmm. I, I don't want to lose this. Whereas I'm like, I don't care. Yeah. That- so I think that that's what will separate someone like Nate, who is like super good from me, who like can act kind of, you know? Okay. And I'll, I'll, I'll grant you that as far as your, you know, that kind of description of, of where you are as an actor, right? I do think you're very good, but, but yeah, I think like what Nate can do and what Brett can do um, is really special to watch. And, and there was times where there was a very emotional scene in the movie. It's like the most, emo- maybe the most emotional scene in the movie. And it Nate was in it and like, he just kind of like paced around the room and he had like AirPods in, and he was like, just, he wasn't like looking at anybody. He wasn't talking to anybody and he he went there and it was like he drives that whole scene in ways that like not a lot of people that like i couldn't even begin to like try to do so you've never really acted before i mean done i mean that one little thing so then Mm -hmm. working with actors where you're the the beginning and the end you're the guy with the idea and the guy who's putting it all together but they are very much like the meat of the sandwich, right? Like how has it been difficult for you trying to learn how to direct while not having an acting experience? Or do you think being around it enough, it doesn't really matter? Like what's your experience with, with telling people how to act as someone who's never really acted? Fuck. That is an excellent question. Um, I think it's been so something... on the fly. That wasn't it. An on the fly question that wasn't in my notes humble brag but that was incredible that, that was such a profound question um you, you can toot my horn on this all day i don't care please go on that was so good um so i think as far as like my journey with directing i think and like i like we've said before it's similar with stand-up copies where it's like when you start you don't know what you don't know so like when i was directing the first time i didn't know what directing was i didn't know how to set i didn't i didn't know how to like i didn't know how to manage the people on the set didn't know how to manage the people or like what i was getting on camera i didn't know how to like manipulate whatever i need to get you know what i want on camera because like there's a certain scene i think you've seen it i'll, I'll tell you about it once we're done but like brett is in a state of distress and um i didn't let anyone else see him that way until I actually said action. So then their reaction to seeing Brett 
for the first time was like completely genuine and that's that's something where it's like you you do feel that like the shock and the and you know the devastation of that um and i didn't i wasn't able to do that when i was younger because i didn't know how to get the best performance out and i think actually sequel was the first time where i where like you were like i don't really know what's going on like i need help like like that was the first time where i was like okay he really wants to do this well and he i i know how to get the best performance out of him i don't know why i knew i don't know like i don't know what happened but i like something switched where when i was working with you i was like okay i get how to do this it was probably the fact that you were playing me where I was like, okay, <laughs> I know how to like get what I want from me. <laughs> and, and, um, yeah. And I think it's also like, there is that element of obviously when you're directing someone who's playing you, you kind of know the character well enough to be able to describe it to a variety of people with a variety of mindsets. So if somebody else was to play it, who's different than me, you could have explained it to them. I feel like equally as well. Mm -hmm. um and then i also feel like we just had known each other for you know a few months at that point and like been around each other a ton over the summer working in fireworks mm -hmm. and so we just kind of i don't know the way i describe it to people is is like hey, we we're just like two somewhat self-loathing like creative jews <laughs> like in omaha trying to get out of it creatively and that yeah. was like well and that that's the thing i think was really important for for you and why you had the you just were the right guy is because I think you had that mix of like you were able to kind of poke fun at the character a little bit. Um, but you also had the empathy of one knowing me literally and then also being able to relate to me in that way that I think made that performance really special. But as as far as like I've gotten bad much better at directing actors because I've just been around it enough. Like there was times where very talented actors that I worked with very early in my career was like, Hey, what do you want from me? I, I, I couldn't talk to them about it. Like I, I couldn't really give them notes on their performance. And then just as I've gotten better or as I've, as I've gotten older, I've been able to tap into that more. And I've been able to, to speak to them and get more of the performance that I've wanted because there was times when I was younger where I knew after I you know, did a take that I did not get the performance I wanted, but I didn't know how to tell them how to do it differently. And now, now there's been, and I mean that I think still occasionally happens, but I think when you're more in a conversational sort of mindset on, on set, which is like how I like to run my sets. Um, I usually what I can do if I don't know exactly what I want is I can be like, Hey, I don't feel like that felt right is like, what did you feel? How did you feel about it? Um, you know, it, it's, it, it really comes down to writing. I, I'm sorry. This answer is so long. I've been like, droning. <laughs> I've been droning. On. By the way, I've, I asked, so I had a list of like maybe six questions. I asked one and this has all just been like, us talking no i love this this is perfect okay. this is exactly what i thought would happen so i'm i'm thrilled like this is because i mean we've really covered everything that i wanted to talk about okay. just okay. naturally no this is no worries at all like keep keep okay. saying what you're saying it comes down to writing i think because writing writing and directing is i think really important i think for young filmmakers too because the writing informs the directing so much and I think that I've been able to get better performances out of my actors as I've gone gone on because my writing has gotten better. Like like writing is a great Rosetta Stone for character performances. Oh yeah, and like the I think it it shows when a character is like when a movie has people where it doesn't just seem like they were just put here in the movie. Like this movie very much feels like we're getting a snapshot of what's going on with these, you know half dozen roughly characters yeah yeah i think the the big switch i've made is i used to write stories and then kind of build characters for those stories whereas uh, semi-recently i've been thinking about characters and then writing the, their stories it, like it, and th that's a kind of a weird way to put that but i'm not i'm not just writing carter to to fit the story exactly i'm writing carter and then being like okay what's an interesting story that carter could 
could have. Does that make sense? Well, I also think it goes back to, yeah, to the sequel was part of us making that was something would happen and then you would just adapt it to the script. Like mm-hmm. there was literally a scene where you and Bobby, the cameraman, were getting into an argument about the film ratio. And then you just went, Spencer, do you think you could recreate this argument with Bobby? So we actually shot me and Bobby versus you and Bobby Mm -hmm. getting into that argument. I don't know if you did that at all on Sunday morning, the movie you'd made previously, but it literally was like, we had these characters and as things would happen, you would just be like, shoot, let's tighten up the wording a little bit and get it on camera. Yeah, it was, that's something that I actually did not do a lot. There was uh, something in Arrested Development, which I'm, I'm sure you've seen, where they they call it retro scripting where they will just be like all right here's what here's what happens in the scene or here's like the premise and then like they will just let the actors like improvise for it for a long time and then as they do that that's where they find the script and they kind of refine it through um the imp- improvisation and that's kind of what I've I've always wanted to do that in a in a way. And I think sequel was the first time we got like really good at that. But imp- improving in writing has made the movie so much better. It's been it's been so much easier to direct when you have like a real script. Because there's been times where it's like I I just up until recently, quite frankly, the scripts have not been very good. And that makes it way harder when you're trying to pull a char- like a real performance out of a character that's you know so one dimensional that there's nothing really to to pull from and improving and it, I guess yeah I'd say write a lot that that'd be some advice I, I would give to to filmmakers is just write as much as you can and I'd say that's the same with. Anything creative that involves any sort of writing, whether it's writing a script, writing for stand up, writing music, writing books, or just whatever it is, like just keep writing because the more you write, the the better it will get just by virtue of doing it often. So that kind of goes into I have like one more question and then we'll just wrap it up. Like if you could give a young filmmaker, someone who's just getting into filmmaking, either they are debating and haven't done it yet they're just dipping their toes in for the first time. What is some advice uh, that you have for those first kind of couple of years? Um, first thing, uh, your first uh, short film, the first thing you make is not going to be good. And that's totally okay. Um, I think that, you know, you put all the work that you put into to make a, a, even a short film Um, it's, you get very emotionally attached to your movies and I think you have to have, you you have to learn how to have like a healthy relationship with your work because I certainly did not for years. That's kind of how see, like that's to me what sequel at least is about is how unhealthy my relationship with Sunday morning was and just kind of like unpacking that, um, so yeah, one, realize that like you're not going to be very good at first and that's totally okay. I think you have to stand being bad. I think like you and me were talking the other day and we were like, you know, any advice for like a young comedian would be like, you're going to bomb and that's okay. You're like, going to bomb. Yeah. There, there's that's, really- with, that's with anything. You, you're going to suck at whatever you do, even basketball. You're going to suck at shooting, but then you shoot a thousand times and you'll just get better at it. Yeah. And I, but I think it's like, I think you have to get through that because I mean... I could never imagine bombing on stage. That sounds like the worst thing ever. Like honestly, so honestly it what? It's fun? Oh, it's oh, it's a it's a hoot. It's well, it depends on the set. Like at an open mic, that's one thing. At a show, that sucks. Um I've kind of learned some strategies as to like how to I mean, there's some shows where it just blows, but uh most comedians especially at this level most of our stage time is open mic so if an open mic sucks it just sucks Mm -hmm. because you're working on something maybe the audience is typically small it is what it is but for a show like if you bomb and then if someone follows you that does really well you you sit it's like you smell yeah it's like you actually smell it's terrible (laughs) yeah so, so okay so that'd be my first thing is yeah just like get through that 
and like that that's gonna kind of build up your your really thick skin you're still gonna learn all kinds of things and then i also think um do things that like actually mean something to you like i refuse to die in omaha nebraska came from like very like real like personal trauma and it was you know not to overshare a little bit but um i had a really traumatic like breakup um in the summer or early summer 2020 so it was like the pandemic um the country was being set on on fire um and you know my girlfriend broke up up with me so i was like in the worst spot i've ever been in and that kind of led to like a downward spiral for me that i'm Mm -hmm. I'm just starting now to kind of dig myself out of. Um, And that's where, and I kind of, I was trying so hard to like get back with her, like just be friends with her. And then in November, I realized like, I was like, this is going to like kill me. Like, this is like, I'm ruining my life for this. Right. So I was like, you know what? I'm done. I'm like, I'm not going to like talk to you about this. Like, I'm not going to put myself through this. And then I just kind of had to, you know, deal with that issue or in my life and i wrote the first draft of the movie and i think it's easily the best thing i've ever written i don't even think it's close um and i knew that because everyone in paradise liked the script and that was the first time that has ever happened in seven years where (laughs) everyone was like really confident about the script going into the movie and we just developed it over time Love it. So just, yeah, put in, put in the, the hours and yeah, I think make things that you genuinely care about. And I think mm-hmm. honestly for everybody who's trying to do something creative, not just filmmaking, those are two great jumping off points. Um, so yeah, I think this is a great place to end on. So where can people right. find you and your films? Uh, if people are interested in checking those out. Um, YouTube, uh, paradise film co. Um, and then Vimeo for sequel because we could we couldn't put sequel on YouTube. <laughs> um, and then you can find me at Gavin Lake Films on Instagram, at Gavin Lake on Twitter, um, and Gavin Lake on Facebook. Nice. Where, where can we find you, Spencer? Oh well, you know now that you mention it, uh, you can find me Spencer underscore Gordman uh, on Instagram and TikTok. Uh, Spencer Gordman on Facebook. And then for the podcast, this is more important. Uh, the podcast is called On Their Way Up. There is T H E I R for you illiterate fucks out there listening. Uh, you find it on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, and then we're on wherever you listen to podcasts. Um, and if you'd rather watch it instead of listen to it, we're on YouTube, On Their Way Up podcast. And uh, on Spotify, you can also, you should be able to watch it. Um, yeah, just look for a big orange logo with white lettering and an arrow on their way up. Uh, yeah, that's the best place to find it. And then we also have a link tree um, that's on the social media. So if you don't know where to find, where to listen to it, go click the link in the Twitter or Instagram and uh, you should be able to find everything. So Gavin, thank you so much for being on. This was a blast. Thanks, uh, dude, absolutely. And best of luck filming the last couple of days of the movie and then editing. And when you get this thing done with, let me know and we'll have you on again. Absolutely. Oh yeah, no, we'll, we'll have a big party about it too. Yeah, don't, don't you worry about it. it was, uh, yeah, I yeah. don't think we'll want that on camera, but yeah. Oh no. Yeah. No, we won't do that. But yeah, no, it, yeah, it, that would... it was a pleasure being on, man. I, I really appreciate you. Yeah, for sure. All right. Take care everybody. Thank you for listening.